I'm ready for Lee. Send the man up. Come on in here, Lee. I don't get what they can keep having their conversation. Okay. We're going to have Hi. our own. Hi. How are Hi. you, sir? Good to, Good to see you. We haven't seen you since open camp yeah. back in I Dallas. Was just saying, yeah, uh, since we were jumping out of airplanes. That's and true, and I jumping know. out of airplanes. Yeah. And things US like Army that. Golden Knights. Have a seat. We've yes. got a seat awesome. there for you. Great. Good well, to be what here. What have you been up to lately? Um, marketing. Yes. Stuff. <laughs> marketing content. You're good at that. And internet digital stuff, I guess. Yeah. Um, basically doing a lot of speaking. Um, I'm basically the, the guy who does that for our company. So it's amazing how blogging has allowed me to get all kinds of exposure, all kinds of uh, opportunities. Um, I was just making one of my slides for my presentation. I'm doing a track keynote tomorrow morning. And uh, talking about how blogging has enabled us to never have any salespeople in our agency for 12 years. No advertising. Amazing. In 12 years. Um, and clients in Western Europe, all over North, North America, um, speaking in Hong Kong, London, Barcelona, nice. New Zealand, here. Yeah. <laughs> I, I yes. think that I think, meeting you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I think that when uh, when you when you can actually demonstrate expertise and you demonstrate that you know yeah. how to do this and you are effectively doing it on your own, that brings you. To, I mean, I know we have people. For example, we have people who come to us and say. Hey, you guys are pretty good at that video thing. Could you make us a video? Right. And we're like, yeah. we can do that. Yeah, exactly. And so exactly. same kind of thing, right? It's walk the talk. It's yeah. walk the talk stuff. And making the promise isn't enough, of course, because after being visible and whatnot, people will talk. And well, can they really do? Yeah. You know, I mean, they do it for themselves, but can they do it for other people? Right. And that will surface itself, and that's good. What's great about more social clients? that are active after being engaged with an agency that knows what they're doing, they become more social and it just, it's like that old commercial, tell two friends, tell two friends and so forth. That keeps going. Oldest form of marketing is word of mouth, right? Right. Yeah. And it's awesome and most how, effective. Yeah, and it's awesome and how it's technology, technology facilitates it, mm -hmm. right? Word of oh, mouth. Oh, definitely. I, that's what social media is all about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Making connections between people and showing the good and the bad and Everything in between. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of what kind of things do you have companies coming to you? What kind of challenges are they bringing to you? I'm curious if they're the same kind of things we're hearing about. Customer acquisition and engagement, retention, things like that. And all across that spectrum of that sort of customer life cycle from, you know, we're, we're brand new, no one even knows who we are or what our category is, to okay, they know who we are, but there are other people doing the same thing and we've really got to stand out to actual revenue uh, goals, right? We've got to increase revenue by X amount. And then going beyond that to, well, you know, we're doing, we don't, we have an active community, but we're not really connected with them as a brand. Yeah. And, or, or how can we empower those evangelists for our brand to acquire more customers? So this whole spectrum, which you call the customer life cycle, that people come to us for things at the beginning, things in the middle, and things at the end. And what ties it all together is this notion of content. Um, and, and I just published a book, by the way, uh, called yes. Optimize that really talks about this major shift between customers and content that's happening. And the way to kind of capitalize on it is there's three things, right? H understanding how, and this is what people hire us for, understanding how people discover. Mm -hmm. What are they searching on? What are they talking about the social web? What, what, it, what creates that discovery of new information? And then how do they consume the content? What are their preferences? Is it video like this? Is it text? Is it tips? Is it how-tos? micro content, what devices, you know, a tablet yeah. or a smartphone or a desktop. And then the third thing is, what can you do to inspire action with that content, right? So obviously everyone wants a sale, but the sale you, everyone can make, even if that person is never gonna be your customer, is a social referral or a referral in terms of like, hey, I would never buy this because I'm not in that situation, but it would be really good for you. Yeah, yeah or like, uh, you know, I was a, you're at a hanging out at a party and somebody says, I'm looking for something. You're like, oh yeah, I remember, I just saw that. It was yeah. blah, exactly. blah, blah, yeah. And there's so many touch points that can occur. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it's not like, oh, hi, we just met today, you're selling this, I'll buy it. Especially in B2B, right? There's a longer romance that's happening. Totally. The six month sales cycle. So making sure that cl clients are looking for visibility in all those different places, um, e you know, push and pull. The push being up on email, media relations, advertising, that kind of thing, coupled with inbound or the, or the pull where people are actually actively looking. And in that search, social yeah. content, 
I think, you know, a lot of people or a lot of companies generally think people online are not, are sort of selfish. But I don't think that's the case at all. I think people are looking for opportunities to to help people, whether that's, you know, finding another business that they need, like the referral or something like that. I think it happens all the time. And I mm-hmm. think we're all like little filing cabinets, you know, we especially are. nowadays in our world of hyper-connected, you know, the hyper-connected nature of everything. We, we have so many sources of inbound information. I think we're just watching these streams and little, you know, filing little nuggets away. Yeah. But what I wonder about too is, How often do you have people coming to you and they say, I know I need to do something. I don't know what really I need to do or how to do it, but somehow it has to tie back to revenue generation. Like, in other words, you know, the whole, my whole budget is predicated on the notion that I can make more money somehow. How often do you have that happen? Like what percentage of the time do you have to show people an ROI versus them having some faith that you know, what they're doing is leading down the road to that. Well, it, it really depends on the context in which they come into uh, an engagement with us. So uh, obviously, uh, it tends to be a lot of, um, you know, small, medium, medium businesses are very revenue focused. Yeah. And as they mature in their use of content and search and other types of marketing tools online, they start to look at the force multiplier effect of uh, brand advertising or brand um, awareness, those sorts of things. Because if someone has heard of you, let's say you do a search on Google. Yeah and you see one, two, three, four, five through 10, and you've heard of number three, and you've never heard of number one or number two, the click-through rate on number three can be substantially greater if there's that awareness that exists already. So in the short term, budget's tight, I don't have any resources, I need to make money right now. There's a process of identifying, okay, where's the low-hanging fruit? So we can start to self-fund this marketing initiative by making you money with whatever. And then starting to look at, okay, what have we learned and how can we scale, duplicate, you know, expand what's actually working? And it's got to be informed by data, you know, analytics and and, uh, monitoring and, and whatever. On the other side of things is uh, a sort of revenue uh, business value calculation that's basically comparing, let's say, social activities and engagement across other metrics like sales cycle length, like shortening sales cycles, um, looking at order volume, order frequency, uh, customer retention. Those are all things companies value. Another thing is cost mitigation, and I talk a lot about this in Optimize, and that is marketing obviously usually funds social media or, mm-hmm. or whatever, maybe, but there's public relations value. Journalists who are doing research, journalists who need to find subject matter experts, how can you become one, allow them to find you, right? Because right? Right. that's a business value. Um, Huge how about re- business value. Recruiting, yeah. recruiting. People put up job listings all the time. They don't optimize them for search or social to make it easy for people to find candidates, right? right? As much as people say, I'm not looking for a job, everybody's always looking for a job. Always searching. They're always There's always searching for stuff. There's always that possibility, right? <laughs> yeah. So Anytime somebody comes to you and goes, I'll pay you more to do what you're doing and give you a better work environment, <laughs> I guarantee you are looking for a job. You just didn't know it, right? And, and if you optimize for that, yeah. right? And so there's opportunities. And the other thing is customer service. Think of um, after the sale, there's so many interactions that occur between a brand and customers that could happen through a call center. Yeah. Well, how many times, especially you guys I know, um, you get an error, you copy it, paste it into Google. Yeah, yeah. oh yeah. All the time. Why are companies not optimizing for that? Right. Why, why, why is their that's, internal search stinks so bad? That's true. It's a great right? point. So, so knowledge base, FAQs, so that's a cost mitigation or even better, delivering better service by making it easy to connect uh, existing customer with information they need through a channel or a tool that they're comfortable with, search. So not just customer acquisition and engagement, but there's lots of other ways to create value, right? Um, Either amplify the effectiveness of what you're already doing, like media relations Mm -hmm. and public relations, or making, Make, or making more effective customer service connections or simply uh, deflecting costs that might otherwise happen. Everything you're talking about, the, 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 the impact to the end user, those are things I want. Like right. as a consumer, I want those things and I've, I don't think I've ever found a company that does everything you just listed well. I mean, if there are any, there are very few. Mm-hmm. And I wonder how much of this is really about the budget because I think that I think if we were to sit down and develop a plan for someone, we could show them that it's cheaper to do it the right way versus the culture in the organization. Yeah, the culture culture has a lot to do with it and who's sponsoring the initiative. Yeah. 
you know, I like to say, we, the way our agency is structured, we have uh, a number of account managers. They're the liaison between our internal uh, subject matter experts and the client. Mm -hmm. And I talk to them about, you know, after the sale is made, right, and everybody comes to us, we don't do anything outbound, yep. but after the sale is made, you have to keep selling, meaning you have to continue to persuade implementation. The best advice in the world means nothing unless it gets implemented, right? So when we look at a company as a client um, and their culture, we have to find ways politically to align ourselves with the people who can act uh, who effectively can actuate the, the implement. The, yes, exactly, and get on their side. Whether we have to bribe them with, uh, or not, not what not they bribe want. them, but ah. <laughs> being no, but friends, yeah. you know, show get them, get Come them be. liquored up, <laughs> whatever yeah. it takes. Right? Not doing Twinkies. <laughs> and I, you know, um, the thing is, I know is somebody who has a liquor store. Yeah, we do. We do. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things most effective at getting those folks on your side is being, articulating what it is that they can get out of it. Yeah. What's in it for them yep. if they work with us to help, even if we're not, so that's one of the mappings that happens when in an engagement is not only our client contact, but us, who else would potentially I'm not sure that everybody knows how these things work, but let's, for, for example, you might have someone like a marketing director or a marketing VP, mm -hmm. pretend, that comes to you and gets you engaged, but right. they, they know that let's say the IT guy might be a little resistant. And so you're going to have to talk to them and learn who all in this organization is going to be affected by right. what you're planning exactly. on implementing. And you have to go to each of those department heads and their, and whoever the key stakeholders are, and you've got to con you know, basically sell them on the yep. idea of the benefits of what's going to happen. And keep on. Yeah. And, uh, and come in and volunteer brown bags, web free webinars. Luckily, we create a lot of content. I do a lot of training and making that kind of information available that other people are paying a lot of money for. If they're, if they're our client, we're going to give them that stuff and that's going to be part of the engagement. Yeah. We do a lot of training as part of the consulting because we want to teach a client how to do as much as they're comfortable with because they do a better job at implementing. And they realize, wow, okay, now I know how to do that, but you can still keep doing it <laughs> because I don't have time. I have eight other things to do. In terms of marketing, there are a couple of schools of thought um, in reaching the online people. One is reach the actual influencers, reach those people who have big audiences, who have the, the voice. Mm -hmm. The other is reach, don't, don't worry about the influencers, only reach the people who are actually using your service, who are right. really using it and who are really engaged. Um, and I've seen time example after example of, you know, just regular Joe who will go out and just sell you like crazy. Do you like one or the other, or are you kind of like the both? Do, model? Doing both, definitely, okay. definitely doing both. Um, I mean, there are niche influencers as well, right? So it may be you know someone who's got a hundred. I'll use this as an example: a hundred thousand followers on right. Twitter or something like that. I'm like, well, that's fine. Well, let's drill down into other engagement metrics, like who's got a ratio of followers to messages to reach and that sort of thing, and look at it that way, um, and look for those niche influencers, uh, influencers in forums and other, you know, other places where things are actually happening. Um, not so much for brand individuals, as an example, where it is really, you know, <laughs> I mean, you gotta have ego to spend that much time. Yeah. <laughs> and that's good, but there's a fine balance between affecting, or being literally able to influence action, right? right? Um, so it's a combination of both. Not only trying to um, attract and engage people who are direct consumers, but also people who are influencers of those consumers and people who will never be your consumer but could do the word of mouth referral. And how long, go ahead. We're almost out of time. Okay. I can't yes, believe we are. it. But I know. How did that happen? So, I know, it goes so quick, doesn't it? But what I, what I wanted to ask was, do you have like a very short list or top things that you that come to mind when somebody comes to you and says, I basically need help in the whole social media blogging you know, space, where should they start? How do they get started with it? What Just are the two or three top things, they need, to things they need to do? Answer a couple of questions. Why? Hmm. Why? And identify what is it that you expect a as an outcome. A lot of people just jump in, don't they? Sure. They look for um, application expertise. Mm -hmm. I really know how to set a blog up. I know how to, you know, Pinterest. I've got yeah. tricks on SEO. Da, 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 da. Why? And, and so helping to answer that question why and then folding that into, okay, this is actually how 
these different social channels or whatever can help you achieve these business outcomes. So you got to imagine that end result first and then back into it. Absolutely. And it's got to be an adaptable plan. Sure. Right? Yeah. Um, so like in, in Optim Optimize, by the way, is a book. It, it literally is a roadmap for uh, planning, All implementation, that. and measurement, and scale as far as identifying training and processes and whatever. In fact, I did an interview with Jay Barry. He's like, did you not have some of your staff come up to you and tell you why, ask you why you put all this stuff in this book? And I'm like, it's like an iceberg. <laughs> and there is a lot of good stuff in there, yeah. but it's like an iceberg. This business it keeps changing. and It does. But, and but, you might have unexpected positive results in one area and you need to follow that path. Got to be adaptive. You, you didn't think yeah. about it. Absolutely. Where can people get optimized, by the way? Optimizebook.com. Simple, That's easy enough. Easy, optimizebook.com. Well, thanks, Lee. Thank we you. really appreciate thanks. you coming by. Good luck on you guys. Your had more lecture time tomorrow. With you. Hopefully, hopefully, we can jump out of an airplane or maybe a helicopter. We can yeah. do that. We, we do a little maybe repelling. Maybe some scuba yeah. diving. Yeah. Or There's got to be some kind of competitive helicopter. Maybe, maybe bull aircraft. riding. Or How about it? Bull chasing. riding. There you go. Bull riding. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's some more down the street. <laughs> oh, yeah? yeah? I'll meet you there. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Good to Lee. see you again. Great to see you. Good to see you. We'll Pleasure. see you later on. <laughs> All right. Always oh, fun to have Lee around. Lovely. He is a huge guy in this space, so you definitely want to pay attention to what he says and follow everything. That is true. Bye.